What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here. And today I'm going to be doing a kind of special video on vol volume analysis tips and tricks. Uh, this is probably the most requested topic that I've got in the last month or so. So I just kind of went ahead and did it. I know that Joe has a video on this. Um, Austin also has a webinar on this type of stuff. So you can go ahead and check their videos out as well. If you have any more questions after this one. And as always, you can always message me in chat. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this is not investment advice, even if it seems like it, purely for educational entertainment purposes. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So basically for this video, I kind of broke it up into different types of volume that I look for, different types of setups, different types of plays that I look for, and how you can kind of use volume as a clue. And I think the main thing that I want you to take away out of this video is that, you know, none of this stuff is the holy grail. It's all kind of used as an indicator in conjunction with the lines, in conjunction with the type of float, in conjunction with how the stock is trading, the setup. So it's just kind of a mixture of psychology, the setup, where people are trapped, uh, kind of stuff like that. So uh, for fader volume, uh, it's kind of the stock is feeling heavy. Every pop, you know, is they're selling into every pop. It's making new lows. It's doing big but decreasing volume. Uh, we're getting that kind of weak feeling. Uh, we get a slam candle, usually under death line. Uh, longs are trapped on the stock. So I've already kind of made a video on the faders that I like to avoid, why I avoid them. Um, but I just thought that I would kind of uh, just include this so I do have this in the video. You can check out my other video as well. So this one, MEIP, this is one from uh, this week where we had the stock pop and just immediately we got this kind of this fade. Um, it ended up testing three again. That three line was kind of like a major story throughout the, the morning and we ended up getting this fade and a little bit of kind of things you can take out of this is that we do this we do get this kind of initial pop uh, obviously everyone who bought here and didn't sell into these pops is stuck and uh, we kind of got this fade and so on um, but you can also notice from the volume down below how we are doing big volume but the volume is consistently fading and the volume is really reflecting the price action here and this kind of 2.8 line was really key and after it broke the kind of death line yes we did get a pop above it but that pretty much tells me that the stock is weak so uh, this is not something that I'd really want to want to to be trying to play you know down here or or over here because we noticed that consistently throughout the day although we do get a little bit of kind of stuff move action into three we do for the most part just kind of get a fade and so basically what you can take out of this is that just we have we have decreasing volume we have fading volume and the times where we are getting a lot of kind of volume we're getting a stuff move and it's going back to normal so that's just some things i wanted to to take out of this one uh, this one as well this one's kind of a little bit of a true kind of fader volume where we get that push and then just we get this immediate fade all day. You notice the volume's decreasing and the volume decrease is also reflected in the price. And I think that's very important is that this this type of decreasing volume is the price is really reflecting the volume and the, the volume and price are going hand in hand and stuff like this. And that's that's kind of what what I look for if 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 the stock is fading. Uh, you know, and I see this type of price action, I, I probably won't touch it and I'll be looking for another 
hot chick, another hot play, something else, rather than trying to be in stocks that are fading. But I'm just kind of using this as an indicator. So if you were trying to get long at seven, let's say, and and hoping for a bounce maybe to eight or 7.5, you'd say to yourself, well, by the time it reached seven, I'm noticing that the volume is fading and so is the price. So maybe I want to either use smaller size or be, be cautious. And that's just something that I wanted to point out. This one, CAPR, another one, I already have videos on all this type of stocks to avoid and stuff like that, so this should be no surprise that this is a stock that I'm kind of looking to avoid. Um, we noticed that, you know, dried up volume, illiquid, and the, the stock is also fading, not much going on here. Um, I will get into kind of the zombie volume that I look for later, but I mean, basically we get this stock that pops and just kind of falls, and by the time we get, you know, down here, everyone who bought up here is now trapped. We're, we're seeing that the the price is reflected in the volume volume reflected in the price and we're just getting this fade so this is probably what the the, the video is going to be more focused on is the consolidation squeeze volume and this is basically when a stock is kind of consolidating near its pre-market support where it should have broken down where the volume is drying up but it's still holding it's an easy way to to kind of trap shorts because what people are thinking is that is stuff like this where wow it's it's lower volume so that means if we're not getting low volume that the price has to drop if there's no volume then that means the price has to drop and people start to get comfortable in these ranges long or short because it's giving you and it's allowing you more times to make decisions whereas if it's a very fast moving stock you have a lot less time to make decisions and people are, are more emotional kind of the more volume that is that is traded. So basically, it's just they kind of drop the volume off. Uh, so people are thinking, you know, it must drop. The stock is usually trading in a smaller range or a, a tighter spread. And, you know, the stocks usually have a, a fast crack. So it doesn't give shorts a great opportunity to get in at a good average. And they, they usually have a fast crack, but they're not really under the death line yet. They need to be uh, still alive enough to be tradable. I think this is a very kind of discretionary decision, but they need to be still alive enough to be tradable. And what you kind of need to be thinking is where are the shorts feeling safe? Where are the shorts afraid? Where are the majority of short sellers short? You need to be asking yourself this question as a long trader. And it's really important that you're always kind of thinking where where the where's the other side going to be? You know, those are questions that I'm always asking in my head. Are longs trapped? Are shorts trapped? Is it under death line? I'm asking myself all these questions. So when they do kind of dry the volume up, it gives them a little bit of a chance to manipulate because what they do basically, what I've found is that, you know, they'll kind of cut the volume off a little bit. People are expecting it to drop and then we kind of get that boom, like it's surprise and we end up getting that squeeze. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to, to just kind of think about it. So this one, uh, PSTI, these are all kind of recent ones that I've seen where basically the difference between this stuff and the fader volume and the fader patterns, which I'll get into as well, is that after this slam, there are a lot of, of short sellers that are thinking, well, after this slam, it has to be done. But it gives longs kind of a good opportunity and a good chance to be able to get long and kind of capture a move like this. And the clues that you can kind of use in a, in a stock like this, along with the volume, is that we kind of, price and volume go hand in hand. So we're going to be trying to use the volume and we're going to be trying to use the price together. So we what we see here is that Obviously, we get this low after this kind of bigger death candle. Uh, we get this pop, which is natural after a kind of a stock makes a move like this. So we get this kind of low and this pop, and then we get kind of another type of 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 like kind of low, but it fails to break down again. And in this case, it's like okay, well maybe it'll break down, but then uh, we kind of get this this other one. So we're noticing that obviously the lows are getting higher. And the highs are kind of getting lower. So people are kind of thinking to themselves, well, the stock should break down. I mean, it's done this massive candle. There's no way that this could, could even squeeze or give us like a 50 cent move to the upside. There's just no way is what kind of people are thinking. But we notice down here that, that the volume is decreasing, but the stock's kind of trending higher. And that's a clue that I kind of use is that, okay, we're getting, we're getting less volume. So it's easy to get this kind of manipulation like down here it kind of says to, to, like, I'm kind of thinking to myself in my mind, like, okay, 
Like, if we're getting lower volume, shouldn't the price be going lower? And that's a time where kind of the volume is kind of telling you like, okay, we're grinding higher, we're doing a little bit, a little bit lower volume. We know that it's easier to manipulate when the stock is doing a little bit lower volume and we, we get this type of candle. So that's kind of a clue. We also know that if you're a short seller, you're probably short from this, this area. And you're probably a little bit more comfortable because you're saying to yourself, wow, the volume is kind of drying up down here. Um, I'm not saying that that every time you see this this type of this type of action is going to work like obviously it needs to be used in conjunction with the lines with the price action and it's really kind of a, a case by case basis but i'm just going to be going over some of these types of traps when they do use the lower volume and when they do kind of squeeze so it's really interesting to kind of note that we notice that the volume has kind of dried up i mean this is the lowest volume that it's done in this kind of half hour period and we get this manipulation type of squeeze right afterward. So it's just something to be aware of. So anyway, that brings me to the end of the video. I'm available anytime to message. Uh, I do a lot of calls. I talk to a lot of shorts. I talk to a lot of longs. Just really about anything, to be honest. So I'm always available if you have any questions. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.